Hi, I'm Stu. Welcome back to another LumaFusion video tutorial. This is my occasional series cut for cut where I break down and analyse different videos, YouTube clips and movies that you know. So today I'm going to take a look at a fellow viewer, subscriber, Twitter friend Ian Matthews and we're going to watch one of his little short films he makes when he's travelling and on holiday. The subject is Cromer Pier, so without further ado, let's get started. I've got two projects here. I've got my cut of Ian's short film and I've got Ian's cut. For the most part, I'll be showing you Ian's cut, but if I choose to make any changes, I will apply it to my cut. And then that way we can have a comparison of timelines. So it starts off with a simple one second cross dissolve, revealing some flowers and a bee. And cuts to the shot without the flower, and then we go back to the flower, then onto this shot of what looks like the edge of a cliff area, close up of bees again, and again these flowers. We've got a fly and a bee this time. And then we start on to the main part of this vignette, which is Cromer Pier. So what would I do with this? Well, the one thing about when you're filming for yourself is, and this is especially so when it comes to doing it commercially, is that you can get attached to footage. And does that footage serve the story? The story here is Ian wants to show us the best of what's going on in Cromer. So, I like this shot at the beginning. We'll talk about the title later on, and obviously he's got music running, and also ocean waves, ambience, crashing sound of ocean waves, you hear them. And that's lovely, because that sets up a, an emotional connection to the sea, and to the noises of nature, effectively rather than if that was disabled and we then just played it with the music does it get less interesting or do you prefer it with the ocean sound again anything i'm seeing here just purely comes down to personal choice so we've got this shot at the beginning and i do quite like it and then it cuts to this other shot the problem with this is, you're effectively doing double duty. Now yes, I do like the cut on the beat. And we can still utilise that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to navigate back to my version of the cut. And zoom in a little bit. I'm going to reverse the first clip. So we'll go into number two, tap reverse, and I've already processed it so that we don't have to wait. We have the flower first, and then we get the focus pull to the cliffs in the distance. And that then kind of does the job of this particular clip, which holds for three seconds. Now, I'd be keen at that point to basically get rid of that clip and we then come back to the bees. Do we need the bees? That is the question. Is this shot with a focus pull stronger than this shot without a focus pull? Well, I would say this tells this part of the story adequately. You don't need to embellish it too much. So even though this is a beautiful little shot, again, don't get emotionally attached to it get rid of it. We then come on to this shot and again because I'm chopping away at clips we're going to be readjusting all the little elements so we need to obviously pop some back. In fact I think we'll take this one. Pretty sure that shot runs the clip so we get the sound of the bees 
just a little buzz the title and then we go into this shot this shot has six seagulls flying through the air a rather it is a blue sky day but there's loads of clouds and uh, the distance is a bit foggy so this this doesn't tell me much about what's going on it's not a strong shot it's got a nice leading line from left to right and obviously it's got saying going on something about overnight parking or something or camping but we don't really need this shot so what i'm going to do is i'm going to detach the bumblebee sound and we're going to delete this shot and that then takes us on to this one and this one's fine there's nothing wrong with it all I'm going to do is just make a few adjustments and again pop that to there so if we start from the beginning and then allow the focus pull and that does the same job now what I would say about this shot is that it's nine seconds long. We can effectively reduce it to probably say around about here. So we'll cut that and I'm going to detach this bumblebee sound and then I'm going to trim away this part of the clip. So if we go from this we get the cut in the beat And we've still got, effectively, the bumblebee buzzing carrying forward. So that's kind of L-cut going on here to this clip. And again, we're going to do the same thing, which is trim it down. So we'll let the bumblebee land. And it just disappears out of frame there. So that's a good point to make the cut. And then we take that away. That then takes us on to Cromer Pier. So we can then shorten... The bumblebee. I don't think we need any bumblebees buzzing here so that can get removed and we're then on to the next part of the film but let's play it one more time. So again because I reversed the clip, got your title does exactly the same job but it's an awful lot more efficient. so we're now back into Ian's cut and in this version you can see we've got I'll actually just turn the volume down a little bit there we go so in this version we've got we pull focus to chrome up here on the distance and then we cut to a beat shot dog walking towards his master and then we've got a match cut continuing that shot where it's kind of zoomed in a little bit scaled up then we've got a wider shot again, back to the beach. And then we go to this close-up of a Victorian sort of postcard. And then a wider shot. That then takes us to people jogging along the promenade. We then go tight on beach hut and then wide. And then that takes us to people walking towards this Victorian column arrangement. So if we look at what I've done with the version, we go to my cut, I have made some changes. So, I've changed the font to take away the sort of lilac purpley box, added a little bit of a drop shadow and placed the font in the bottom right hand corner just to balance things up a little bit better. Now there's nothing wrong with what Ian did with the font being up the top and sort of surrounded but I just like to keep things a little bit more simpler when it comes to titling. Especially with something like this that's a travel vlog. So we cut to there, we cut to the fly and then what I've done now is we then cut to this shot of the beach area. Now what I'm effectively doing is I'm continuing these flowers as a kind of theme through the shots and then they get less important as we go further forward. So we've got the shot here of the dog coming towards its master, the dog being that tiny little speck there, and then we've got a kind of old-fashioned um, 
stack of wood that stops the beach being eroded away too much and then it comes in a bit tighter. Now what I've also done is Ian had scaled this up a little bit more. I've just actually relaxed the scaling and just balanced it up so that you can see the end of the wooden structure there. And that then takes us to Ian's focus pull. Now I've trimmed a tiny little bit off the front end of this and it then just pulls to Cromer Pier. That then introduces us to the promenade and people jogging and enjoying the day, which is fine as soon as they're out of frame it cuts. Now rather than having this tight shot first of all, I've gone to the wide because you kind of want to introduce where you are. It's a bench seating area and then you can cut into the old postcard. Again, similar situation here with the beach huts. Ian had gone to this shot, I've gone for the wide, a little bit tighter, so this is beach hut number 100. And then that takes us to our Victorian cast iron pillars and people walking towards it. So if I just play the clip through from this point, It's just getting a natural flow to the film and using the elements within the film to tell the story. You now know it's Cromer and then we're starting to show off Cromer. And there we go. I'll put the volume back up on that. And that's that part of the cut pretty much done and then we'll look at the next stage which is do I like this shot of the cast iron pillars yeah I'll keep it in but then I've got a long shot of the beach and I think there's a focus pull I know Ian was practicing his focus pulls and just experimenting with Filmic Pro but does this lend itself I think the cast iron sort of pillar area is too far over to the left. Let's have a look at the cropping. Yep, it's just the way he's framed it. He's got a beautiful leading line, but he doesn't really need to do the focus pull. So I would actually just leave it as it is. And at the point where it does do a focus pull and goes out of focus, I would just make a cut. And you've also got an opportunity to cut on the beat there. So we'll take that away. Just lower the volume a little bit again. There. And that, again, you've got little cast iron fence post. And then it's there again. So it kind of balances things out. Nice birds flying by. And again, do we maybe want to actually tighten up on this one a little bit? Let's see where he's been at. So maybe come into it a little bit more. Push that over. And then we'll just straighten up the framing. And then pull it down a little bit. So we're still seeing these elements, but they're a little bit less intrusive in the frame. Play that through. And I think that's a nice cut. And it's just got a smaller version here. So timing slightly because I've make, made adjustments to the clips. So what we'll do is, I don't know if there's anything yet, we'll hold on to this clip a little bit longer. So. And we will reduce the length of this clip so that it matches the beat. And can reduce the length of this clip. And that's a good one to hold on to because you're now getting to see the pier a lot more prominently. 
or just again cut into the beat there we go he's got a little bit of a pan going on here which I like to see and we might as well take advantage of cutting to the beat again now again we've got this issue of in fact no we don't I thought it actually went wide but it doesn't it's perfect sorry I was going to say we've got this issue of this clip being wide and this bit this clip being a little bit closer up but it's actually got it perfect so my apologies Ian we'll go from this clip this clip you might as well take advantage of cutting to the beat just now while you can and it also just reduces the length of time that you need to be looking at this clip there we go and we'll just roll that over to there again just moving the direction of the clip A bit of a focus pull. Do you need that focus pull? I don't think so actually. So what I'm gonna do here is cut that out and then we're just going to balance up the shot. So we will give ourselves a little bit of room zoom in a tiny little bit and then just straighten the horizon and the interesting thing is I'm looking at the bottom and the top goes out of position so we need to kind of maybe lose the bottom and just lean into the top somewhat or do we lose the top and lean into the bottom no, I think we'll go this way. That's just a fine line between the two. We'll play through. This is a good focus pull because you are... It makes sense to me that we reverse this clip because you want to see the telescope and then see what it's looking at. So if we go into speed and reverse, I will reverse the clip. Then we come back out. And then this time jumps to here. So telescope burst. And then where it's looking at. Sadly, there's nothing of great interest out there in terms of a boat. It still gets the point across. And then we go into this shot. This again comes back to this is a tight shot, this is a wider shot. So do we want to maybe swap these guys around? So that we go from here, using the pier edge, then to here, and then to here. Now again, this is a focus pull, there to there, a bit more subtle. Maybe take a few seconds off of it, cut to the beat and play. Yeah, that makes sense now. Then we've got a shot of Chromer itself. Which I think is particularly pretty. One thing that is just irking me ever so slightly is that little bit of pier at the bottom corner that's distracting. So if we go into the frame and fit and I think we'll just choose to just move it slightly out there and have a tiny little bit more sky. And you've got some sort of nice rays going on there. So let's appreciate it. That's all I want to do with that. Just make this clip a little bit cleaner. Nothing distracting. That takes us back to the pier. It's fine. And then this shot of the water. Personally, I think this is too long. So we've got it so that the water's sharp and then it goes away. 
it's just a kind of blurred resolve, dip to black kind of situation. So what will I do? I will just reduce that down a little bit. And this is where we're going to have to reduce the length of the music, a cinematic movie scene music. Let's have a look. Right, we want to drop the ocean waves ambience. Get rid of that. Make sure that's not interfering with anything. I'm just going to check that our configuration is set to master so that we're getting the music at the full volume. And what I would actually do at this point is cross dissolve the music between the two. So we bring that slightly that way, drag that in a little bit more, and then we go to a transition and then Video cut, audio cross dissolve. Doesn't need to be too long. I think 16 frames worth is fine. Let's try now. There we go. So that's us on to the next vignette, which is Hockham Hall. Now, this has been long enough, I think, for this episode of Cut for Cut. So we will say that this vignette is episode 4 and in the next episode we will look at the edit on Hockham Hall and maybe into the Bure Valley Railway but I think we're long enough in the edit with this one but I will see you on the next episode see you later like the video, then give it a thumbs up, as it really helps the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, for more video tutorials every week, and ring the bell to get notified of when Stu has uploaded a new video tutorial. You have been watching, I am Stu, see you later.